One of Hasbro's big announcements at this year's San Diego Comic-Con was that the Lightning Collection will be going on hiatus for an unknown period of time. Seeing as when Hasbro puts a line on hiatus, it's a 50-50 shot and never comes back. Let's take a look at the last figures put out on this range. The 30th Anniversary Remastered Edition of the original six Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Are these last Rangers the ultimate versions of the characters, or just another lackluster release at a higher price point? Let's find out. Twenty twenty three marked thirty years since the Bonds Power Rangers first aired in the US. To celebrate this anniversary, Hasbro released all six of the Series One Rangers in a deluxe offering. We got the green, red, blue, yellow, black, and pink rangers, all with numerous accessories. The green, red, blue, and black are all in the same pinless body with no difference other than the helmets. The pink and yellow ranger sculpts are the same, minus the skirt on the pink ranger. I'm not gonna go too depth into bot articulation as they move like you'd expect to from Hasbro figures in 2023. The drop down hips are a bit weird on the male figures and Hasbro still doesn't seem to get butterfly joints right. In terms of accessories, they're pretty much standard across each figure. Each figure comes with a respective power up and a morpher, color coded morphing effects, and three variations of the blade blaster. The morphers are pretty cool, although they're very tiny, so I'd be careful not to lose them, but the detail is good if you can get close enough to see it. You also get extra hands, usually consisting of closed fists, and then a set of hands to hold the morpher, along with the gripping hands included on the figure. The only variations here are you also get an open palmed hand with the pink and yellow rangers instead of a right fist. You also get an unmasked head for each of the rangers as, well, almost all of the rangers. We'll get into that later. And the red, yes, red ranger, comes with a dragon shield and armbands. Well, the green ranger comes with a candle. I think this is a reasonable amount of accessories for each figure. The morphing effects I could do without, as I really never use them on display. But there's nothing I feel that is missing for each figure. The unmasked heads are okay. Some of the likeness is better than others. I'll let you be the judge of it. We have David Yost as the Blue Ranger slash Billy. Amy Jo Johnson as the Pink Ranger slash Kimberly. Walter Jones as the Black Ranger slash Zach. Jason David Frank as the Green Ranger slash Tommy. And T-Trang as the Yellow Ranger slash Trini. And then we have the Red Ranger as the Red Ranger? Wait, why didn't we get an Austin St. John head sculpt? We've had them before. Oh, well that makes sense, I guess. We'll now get into one of my biggest gripes of these releases, the Green Ranger. The Green Ranger and the Dragon Shield are synonymous with each other. You really should have come with it. Fortunately, the shield is removable from the Red Ranger, and you can put it on its rightful owner. My guess is since they didn't include a head sculpt with the Red Ranger, they gave him the shield and armbands to try and make the offer similar between the releases. Also, the holster for the Dragon Dagger does not match the on-screen counterpart, rather just being a recolor of the white one used for the other Rangers. Every other figure, I think, does an okay enough representation of the character and what they should come with, and that I don't feel like they're missing anything. But what do I like about this set? As a shelf display, I think they look fantastic together. The colors really pop, but that was always the appeal of the show to begin with. In my opinion, these are the best versions of the characters that Hasbro has released. If the line truly does not come back, these aren't the worst figures to end off on. That being said, I don't know if there's enough here to warrant a second purchase if you already own the older versions of the figures. I never owned the first releases, so picking these up for myself was a no-brainer. But besides the pinless bodies and a few changes to the proportion of the helmets and minor improvements to articulation, I don't know if it warrants picking these up to replace the old versions. Not to mention that these ones are also $34.99. But, knowing Hasbro, if they decide to continue the Lightning Collection, we'll probably see, see these figures again, as they can't seem to stray too far from the Mighty Morphin characters. Your mileage may vary with these releases, but I, for one, am glad to be able to add these to my collection. Well, let me know down below if you picked these up, or did you have the older releases and didn't feel the need? Do you think we'll see the Lightning Collection again in the future, or do you think the line will be locked into a space dumpster forever? As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe or leave a like if you want. I'm Fargo 97 and I'll see you next time.